Hi. Nice. So in the last lecture, uh, we talk about the you know field oriented control of electrical machines and the uh, normal idea is yes, uh, we use the Clark and Prague transformation uh, to get an idea of the rotor position and what should be the exact position of the applied voltage or currents. But then the problem is okay, you can uh, start with the uh, Clark and Prague transformation, then you can. Uh, apply the inverse Clark and uh, inverse Park and inverse Clark transformation to get the real uh, sinusoidal voltages and then you can apply a, a sinusoidal PWM SPWM but actually there are more efficient and easy methods to do that okay to uh, just uh, make a couple of uh, definitions first so here are, here you see a you know three phase uh, two level uh, voltage source inverter and you know it's uh, connected to normal grid and the voltage is rectified using a three phase uh, diode rectifier and we have those transistors of course we have the anti-parallel diodes but they are not uh, shown here so first uh, let's uh, model those uh, half bridges as like a, a two position switch so either you know T1 can be turned on while T2 is off. You don't want to turn two of them at the same time because it will uh, short circuit that uh, capacitor. Either you turn on T1 or T2 at this leg. Okay, so in this case, so it can be modeled like a two position switch. Either that uh, switch is connected to the upper leg, upper position, which, you know, which sense to that node as like VDC or it can be connected to the bottom position which a zero volt is applied okay so each uh, leg can be shown like this okay and we define if the switch is at top position so in other ways if the bottom uh, transistor is off and top transistor is on so that means we are applying a VDC we call that position one and if the other one is connected uh, the bottom switch is on and top switch is off so we call that position zero so for this configuration we can call this one zero zero like as a binary system right so actually we can have like you know two positions and each uh, leg so there are like uh, three legs so there are eight positions eight different combinations so those eight different combinations can be represented like as a three digit, three digit binary number right so let's uh, talk about those things and we will call these ones voltage vectors okay and you can click on those things to get uh, more information today i will just give you a brief idea so if i mean if we apply a, I mean, these are I and mean, phase uh, names are U, V, W, and think there is like A, B, C. But if we apply, if we say this is phase A, if we apply positive voltage to phase A and zero voltage to phase B, then our current will come through uh, phase A, I, and from B and C phases, we will have minus. I over 2 so again uh, we talk about that one and the resultant vector resultant MMF vector will be in the direction of phase A right so we call that one that position as 0 0 1 so we are applying phase A and we are getting an MMF in the direction of uh, phase A or phase U in this case and similarly I can apply 0 1 0 0 1 0 okay and in that position if you look at 0 1 0 it is another MMF direction with 120 degrees or can apply 1 0 0 and these are the directions of phase A applied for example you can get the same MMF direction with DC excitation on phase A or phase B and phase C or I can how do I get reverse of that one what can I do uh, you can for example instead of 
instead of applying 0, 0, 1, okay, if you apply 1, 1, 0, so that means both phase B and phase C is connected to positive, so they will have uh, plus I over 2, plus I over 2, and only C, only phase A will be connected to the bottom position at 1, 1, 0, and that means on phase A, I will have minus I. On phase B and C, I will have uh, plus I over 2. So if you, again, remember the phasor directions, the phase A direction will be here. On phase B and phase C, it will be uh, negative directions, so they will add up in the other direction. So this will be 1, 1, 0. Okay, so I, you know, strongly advise you to think all over these combinations and, you know, understand that, you know, phasor directions. It is really important for the you know rest of the lecture so once we have those things and actually if you divide 360 by 60 degrees so you will have six vectors okay but we thought uh, previously that there are eight combinations combinations what about the remaining two so what happens if i apply zero 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 if i have just go back if you just turn on all bottom switches and turn off all top switches that means all three phases are shorted to each other through those transistors and that thing is connected to the negative terminal of the capacitor so technically i am applying a zero voltage to phase terminals and this zero zero vector is called a zero vector okay but interestingly the same thing will happen if we just turn on all those switches okay if we just turn on all those switches then phase a phase b phase c will all connect it to each other while the remaining will be you know open circuited they are off so if they are all connected to each other it doesn't really matter if they are connected to the positive polarity or negative polarity because the machine you know three terminals are short to each other and they are just touching to the positive uh, terminal of the capacitor yes but the remaining the uh, t2 t4 t6 here the bottom transistor are open circuited so our circuit is floating so you cannot have some kind of current so that one one vector one 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 vector is also called a zero vector okay so in this combination this is zero zero one vector this is 0, 1, 1, this is 0, 1, 0, etc. And the dots here in the origin, they are V0 vector, uh, 0, 0, 0, V7 vector, 1, 1, 1. By the, by the means, uh, V1 is the binary equivalent of that combination, so V3 vector, so it doesn't go, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It seems like a random arrangement, but it makes sense because that v3 vector is the you know normal num numeric equivalent of that binary number 0 1 1 2 plus 1 makes 3 so that is actually 0 1 0 so it is equivalent to 2 1 1 0 4 plus 2 is equal to uh, 6 etc okay so these vector na names are according to their phasor directions and also they're according to their binary equivalent so Actually, these are the all combinations that we can apply, uh, eight of them. So again, you know, you can think those things as like phase A, phase B, phase C, minus phase C. But, you know, just think about all those combinations, uh, draw the current directions and, you know, please uh, understand truly before proceeding on the next uh, slides. Okay, so if we just quickly have a look at that one, there's another interesting thing happening here. So we have V0 vector, so all of them are connected to zero. Then we have V1 vector, it is just here, so that one is moved, so it is like a binary count. And we have V2 vector, get rid of, sorry. Uh, so this is, okay so this is uh, zero vector so this is one vector one zero zero one and this is 
v2 1 0 1 0 0 1 1 v3 it makes 3 so you can uh, see the current directions shown here this is v4 v5 okay v6 and v7 okay in the v7 here you can see all the currents on the v7 yes all our switches are connected to positive polarity but they are short circuited within each other so there is no current flowing on here so it is a zero current as well okay so we talk about the you know square wave operation and actually if you understood the uh, square wave operation you can remember we were just giving those things you know those vectors the exact same vectors we are applying it and we are waiting until the rotor comes into that position then we move our vector 60 degrees uh, forward okay so that was the main idea but the disadvantage of that one has like we have quite uh, ripples okay harmonics and that kind of thing so uh, the solution was to apply sinusoidal pwm but that phase arrangement that vector directions uh, can be utilized to apply a much uh, nicer waveform okay okay so i don't want to apply a vector like in the zero degrees then into 60 60 degrees then on the 120 degrees instead of making that kind of uh, discrete switches i would like to apply uh, some kind of uh, vector so for example if i want to apply a vector at 47 degrees i want to synthesize it using those vectors okay so this is the main idea of the space vector uh, pulse width modulation so let's have a look at that animation again uh, you have seen that uh, quite a lot of times and this is the resultant uh, waveform this is the resultant waveform of three you know pulsating waves separated by 120 degrees the windings of an ac machine and the black one is the resultant mmf again if you look at the if you look at the phaser okay that phaser is rotating with constant magnitude and those are actually the vectors that can be used to generate that signal okay that phaser but actually we use the same idea for clark and park transformations okay we use a real-time signal you know that uh, signal uh, to convert it first to a phaser then in the phaser domain first we converted it to a rotating frame then everything easier for our pid controllers or other reference values but then okay you know i want to generate that phaser that phaser information is uh, i have that knowledge but instead of converting it again to real time actually uh, there's a really nice thing here so i already can see you know what are the what should be the magnitudes of applied vectors okay so i can adjust the pwm signals of each the vectors the switching sequences that i just showed you i can adjust the due to cycles of those uh, uh, switching states so i can generate the resultant uh, phasers in between instead of you know in a square uh, or six step pwm i'm just applying with this great waveform so i can generate uh, the vectors in between okay so the idea is so here we start with an example so if i want to generate if i want to generate that red arrow so the magnitude can be moved okay can be smaller can be slightly bigger of course i cannot give you know that amount of large uh, voltage phaser without increasing my dc voltage we will talk about that one but for example if its magnitude is 91.3 of the maximum value i can give and if it is not at zero degrees not at 60 degrees but at 38.3 degrees so how can i generate that phaser by using the two neighboring vectors okay so of course what you can do is i mean you can maybe i mean forget about the switching states just think of vectors so if i want to give that red arrow from the vector point of view using these two directions i can go up to that value 
So I can give, let's say, 60% of the magnitude of V3, and I can go parallel in that direction, let's say, 20% of V1. So by applying 60% V3 and 20% V1, I can come to the same position. I can generate that voltage. So this is all, I mean, it is really important to understand the main idea of space vector PWM because there's you know, quite large uh, mathematics behind it. And actually they're really uh, quite different and uh, with different advantages and disadvantages, different versions of uh, space vector PWM, different control techniques. And generally this uh, graduate level uh, technique but you know it's commonly used in in commercial devices also it's quite widely accepted in the industry so i want you to get an idea of it at least okay so this is how we generate that vector okay so the idea is okay so i want to generate uh, that signal okay i think this is not exact the same uh, vector but anyway so i have like this vectors okay so i can say i can start with i mean here i can start with for reducing the signal i can apply zero voltage okay again i'm not getting into uh, algorithmic details but i want you to understand the main idea so here you have again some kind of triangular waveform and here okay so these are exactly the magnitudes of these ones okay now algorithmically so you can generate or if you again take a snapshot of it you know the exact magnitude of the green arrow exact magnitude of the red arrow etc and this is exact at that one moment okay that snapshot and the magnitude of red arrow is converted to a you know voltage level reference like we did with the sinusoidal pwm or in dc dc converters and the black arrow uh, sorry blue arrow is normally in that direction remember so that's why it's in the negative magnitude but it has some value and then we have the green arrow again it should be in the 240 degrees but it's in the opposite direction in that snapshot so its reference is in the negative okay i will show you an animation of it and so now Again, you just compare these two, okay, with the triangular and that voltage level. And if our control signal, okay, is, or if our like reference signal is higher than that one, okay, then that means I have gone too much. I'm generating uh, too much signal than my reference. So let's turn it off. So zero for phase U. So I am turning on the uh, low i think this was who so i'm turning on the low transistor in that one then if my triangle gets below of my reference value then i need to increase my input so i'm applying an on signal to the top transistor so if you just look at that figure and if you just compare it with the you know that triangle and the red arrow you will see the boundaries and you can see how kind of uh, pwm signals that you can uh, generate okay okay so similarly if you have a look at the blue one okay the magnitude is kind of small okay so instead of having a really high dude cycle in that one so you can have a 50 50 something like that probably is less than uh, 50 because in the negative range but it is zero up to here one for that one zero for the remaining and one here and again if you look at the green arrow okay so it's in the negative range so by the way uh, like 50 50 corresponds to zero and less than 50 50 corresponds to uh, negative uh, voltage direction negative vector direction so we can see it in the uh, green arrow so the magnitude of that thing again it is just uh, determined by those boundary conditions so you have that value so you can easily do that using comparators you know op amps or you know using uh, microcontrollers writing some codes okay that's easy 
but the interesting thing is so let's have a look at the uh, meaning of that vector so at the initial position we have zero from u zero from v zero from w so it is zero 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 so it is zero 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 it is a v zero zero vector okay then i have v one okay zero zero so actually it is uh, the phase order is different so remember this is u v w so don't don't get confused so that vector is zero zero one zero zero one is v one vector it's shown here v one vector is shown here zero zero one okay and then we have the it corresponds to v1 i don't know if you can see it maybe you can check it from your slides then in the next step i have one one zero okay or zero one one zero one one so that is corresponds to zero one one it is v3 vector so binary colon is v3 i have v3 and then it goes something like that then in the midpoint i have one 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 it is v7 vector and this is also called a zero vector because it applies zero voltage then it goes backwards then it goes like uh, again this is v3 vector v7 vector so we start with v0 v1 v3 v7 v3 v1 v0 and so on so again if you just you know compare it with the magnitudes you don't have to do anything what i am just doing is just convert that thing into some kind of comparator so i can have you know the equivalent of that thing is applying v1 for 67.4 percent or 31.6 percent then i have v3 actually i think it's probably not correct or not for that instant i think it's written here uh, so i have v, v0 magnitudes v1 v3 v7 magnitudes they are all applied in pwm and the equivalent of that thing will generate the exact vector that i would like to generate okay so probably here you have the larger values then another interesting thing i would like to emphasize okay and that's good for uh, space vector pwm uh, signals so the switching sequence okay so it just starts with zero 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 remember with v, v0 v1 v3 v7 so these vectors are written here so it just jumps from here to here from here to here from here to here what are the interesting thing is so we have all the switches are off or like uh, bottom switches are on then we have zero zero one so only one leg is changing its position so the first two legs are having the same switching states so we only have a switching transition occurs in the third leg okay so that helps us to minimize our switching losses and from zero zero one to zero one one again only the middle only the middle leg changes from that step to another step so again only one step change and from here and zero one one to one 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 only that uh, digit or that uh, leg changes its uh, switching states again that help us uh, to reduce our uh, switching losses okay then from one 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 it it doesn't go from one 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 to zero 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 again if you look at here it will come to v7 then v3 then v1 then v0 so it will basically come to that point then it will go backwards so it will move back and forth so in every step in every state change only one leg is changing its position which is advantageous uh, for our system actually we have the same uh, thing in six step pwm convert so normally again the switching states can be starting with zero vector a basic vector so one to seven they are called basic vectors another basic vector then a zero vector then goes like that okay so that switching sequence and only one switching position is changed at each step so here i think that is uh, the maybe more explaining part 
So let me get rid of myself here. Okay, so let's uh, make it uh, bigger. So here you see the real time, you know, directions or the required directions, and the black one is the required MMF. Of course, the uh, what should be the required MMF depends on your rotor position, depends on your torque requirement. You may want to change that position suddenly if your motor would like to suddenly accelerate or decelerate. Okay, and its speed, rotational speed will be changing if the rotor speed is changing. But at the end of the day, you have a vector. Okay, and that vector then can be arranged using these three uh, phasor directions, vector directions. Then you can see how, you know, with, for example, here the red reach to maximum value, red is zero, 50% red is at negative value, so it is at 50% maximum value. So you can see those magnitudes are moving up and forth, okay? So then green is becoming maximum, maximum position, then green is reducing zero, then it goes to negative maximum, then zero again, then to positive maximum. So then you can just, you know, convert those things. I don't know if you can see, let me try zooming in a little bit. So if you can look here, this is a really nice animation, by the way, I didn't prepare that one. So if you just, you know, put those vectors like whenever it is high it is one whenever it's low it's zero etc you will see that you will have a v0 vector that is the magnitude the boundary is moving back and forth but v0 is always there and v7 is always there again its boundary is going back and forth but depending which one is overlapping the other one or which which one is extending the other phaser those names are changing. So it's V4, V5, then it is V1, V5, then it is V1, V3, then it is V2, V3. Okay. And actually, if you look at the uh, phaser equivalent of that thing, that means that vector can be generated by just using uh, those two phasers. Okay. So you can just, I don't know, v, V6 and V4, V5 and V4, V1 and V5. Uh, v1 and v3 it goes like that and whenever you are at that switching stage okay so you will have of course they are not staying in that single position as shown here instead they are switching really quickly between those two phasers and the actual frequency of that thing is corresponds to your switching frequency so it can be operating at like maybe tens of uh, kilohertz but the fundamental frequency is depending on how as those uh, mag uh, those arrows not arrows bars are changing their magnitudes again you know it is important to visually understand it and i hope it will be clear uh, once you implement it in your in your simulation assignments but i am you know 100 percent sure that you will see uh, soon in your uh, professional life Okay, so that technique is called space vector PWA. Okay, again, there are like different uh, versions of it, but that is uh, the fundamental idea. So SPWM is short for a sinusoidal PWM, SVPWM is short for sinusoidal vector, so space vector PWM. And there's another really nice uh, feature about that one. So think about the sinusoidal PWM, and we discussed it in the in the previous lecture, right? So this is again you can think as like the phasor diagram, but then what should be the boundary? What should be the boundary of that vector? For example, can I give a vector like really exceeding that boundary? What defines our voltage boundary? Of course, that boundary is defined by my DC link voltage. For, for example, if I have 500 volts and if i want to give like 2000 volts it will not be possible i need a boost stage in between then i will get a dc voltage which is adequate to apply that signal but what is the adequate voltage levels okay so assume you have 
a DC link voltage which is VDC then in sine PWM in sine PWM again I don't want to get into much details of that figures but I hope that will help so with sine PWM so if you have let's say VDC then you can give a sine peak which goes up to VDC over 2 to minus VDC over 2 so in total the distance between these two is equal to VDC okay so the peak of our voltage the peak of our sinusoidal voltage can be uh, VDC over 2 right but in remember uh, this is the phase voltages by the way uh, remember uh, for the uh, six step PWM you know what we are doing is you are exciting one uh, phase and the other phases are uh, connected in parallel so they are not sharing the voltage you know, equally what they are doing is like uh, sharing it like two VDC over three and one uh, VDC over three so in maximum you can go up to 2 over 3 VDC applying a 6 step uh, kind of square waveform and this was the circle in between the interior one is the sine PWM signal and then while I will show the equations uh, while you apply uh, SV PWM space vector PWM then you can go up to VDC over square root 3 Okay, remember square 3 is around 1.78 so that number is actually bigger than that value so let's uh, we'll talk about that one and another uh, nice thing about that one again we are not getting into details in this course but uh, SV uh, PWM is also quite advantageous in terms of harmonic distortion okay and space vector SV PWM utilizes input voltage more okay instead of applying 1 over 2 of the VDC voltage at peak you can give 1 over square 3 it is 15 percent more okay so again uh, let's uh, go back and discuss what is the maximum possible phase voltage with SPWM when we talk about that one again if the overall length is VDC then the peak of the phase voltage peak of that sinusoidal voltage can be VD over 2 okay the phase voltage peak is VDC over 2 then you know let's do a practical uh, case so let's say you have a you know normal three phase AC or by rectified AC you have 400 volts line to line voltage here with a three phase uh, diode rectifier then DC, I don't know if you can remember it, it was 3 square root 2 divided by P. Okay, in a, in a single phase, it was 2 square root 2 divided by P, it was 0 0.9. Uh, with uh, VDC, it was, uh, sorry, with 3 phase, it is 3 square root divided by P, and this was equal to 1.35 uh, times line to line voltage. And if you have 400 volts line to line voltage, of myself again so that means you have 540 volts dc average of course if you have some ripple but in average uh, you will have 540 volts if you have 540 volts here then if you are driving this motor with a sinusoidal pwm then what is the maximum phase voltage that you can generate okay so maximum motor phase voltage is in RMS okay VDC over 2 was the peak and if you divide uh, 540 volts by 2 then uh, square root 2 then you will have 190 volts okay so again in normal standard motors you know that should be 230 or 220 volts but with 190 volts you are applying less than the rated voltage so that means you cannot I get rated torque you cannot get rated current etc okay either you need a boost circuit in between or maybe we can apply a different technique so how we can increase the voltage uh, limits beyond uh, the dc link voltage okay 
a game you know this is uh, this is a different i will talk about a, a different uh, pwm technique again the same we will show that the same numbers are applicable to space vector pwm but this is the limitation of sinusoidal pwm so we want to get over that value and space vector is not uh, the only technique there is another technique that i would like to uh, show you so again this uh, seems like a black magic to you but again if you uh, check your knowledge from the previous years uh, we will use something problematic into something uh, useful okay it is called the third harmonic injection okay third harmonic injection so in the third harmonic injection so the idea is i mean here you can see the voltage uh, limits okay so here i have my rectifier uh, inverter and if again if i assume that voltage level is vdc okay that means my sinusoidal is going to limit it by that red arrow okay then the peak of that red arrow will be vdc over 2 to minus vdc over 2 then i mean this is 190 volts and i would like to increase it to 230 volts for example i want to apply that dashed line but i cannot go beyond that boundary because of the uh, capacitor voltage the trick that i can apply i can insert instead of applying a perfect sign reference i can add a third component i can add a third component into my sinusoid okay this one plus a third harmonic inject signal then i can apply my reference signal like that okay so i can apply a reference signal like that and of course in the other end you can apply a square wave like that but once i have square wave you, you are aware of that i am generating like third harmonic fifth harmonic seventh harmonic etc so instead of applying a square wave i can apply a sine plus the third harmonic then you can argue then we have the third harmonic that is where uh, that's where we are having the black magic thing okay even if you apply a blue curve a sine plus third harmonic like that okay so if you actually now separate it into fundamental uh, components what you will obtain is uh, if you have the blue line the fundamental will be actually larger than that boundary and then you will have red arrow okay so i can have i can have the maximum value at that point okay at p over 3 but then i'm not the blue line is not exceeding my boundary but the first fundamental goes over that one so the question is if i apply the dash line to each three phases okay if i apply dash uh, third harmonic injected waveform three cases what's happening again i don't want to get into detail uh, we did in previous courses so for example if you have a, a y connected machine you see those harmonics are canceling each other and the, although the line to line voltage has these harmonics the phase voltages will not have these components okay because like we have the neutral voltage is not connected anywhere it's moving up and down so the phase voltage will be a perfectly you know if you subtract the third harmonic from that signal the phase voltage will see that thing and that thing has a higher magnitude than that boundary okay so if you calculate the magnitude of the first fundamental then you will find vdc divided by square root 6 and you can get 220 voltage there okay so it can be uh, like uh, rated voltage uh, can be achieved and you can see the voltage is 
220 volts it is 15 percent higher than the sinusoidal uh, pwm okay and here you see how it works the modulation index so the only thing that we are doing is instead of using a perfect sinusoid uh, reference and we can generate all our pwms with that perfect sinusoids i can add a third injection pwm I can in, uh, inject the third harmonic, so I will apply that uh, dashed blue line to our PWM comparators. You can use the same blocks uh, with the you know that triangular comparators and that kind of things, and you will generate a higher voltage, a higher voltage, and your DC link limitations. Again, uh, we are not getting into details of that one, but we have the same property in. Uh, space vector PWM. Okay, this is third harmonic injection. That's a different technique than the uh, space vector, but space vector has the same magnitudes. Okay, so again, you can work that out like for phase voltages for one of the space vectors. If you excite like one of the phases, so it is same with the uh, sixth step. So if you just apply continuously for example v1 vector so v1 vector means you are applying vdc to phase a and you are applying zero volts to phase b and c so the voltage is not shared equally but you will have two over three of the dc voltage at the uh, the phase a voltage at peak then if you I mean, that is the maximum that you can achieve with the sixth step but then what happens if you are somewhere in between so what if what are the two two adjacent vectors applied for 50 50 percent then you will have let me go back i think it's not clear that stage okay so probably it is uh, more clear with this graph so if if i apply just one vector I will get 2 over 3 VDC. So point O to point L is 2 over 3 VDC. Okay. So if you apply a six step you know, of PWM, you are applying that vector, then you are applying that vector, you are applying that vector. It goes like that. Discrete forms. It generates harmonic. And if I apply uh, sinusoidal PWM, then I am moving through that phaser diagram through that circle and the distance from o to n is uh, 1 over 2 vdc this is the peak okay so my question is if o to l if o to l is 2 over 3 okay then what is the o to m because i don't want to go in discrete steps i want to move in a perfect circle so what is the height or what is the radius of the circle that i can fit into that uh, hexagon right so if this is 2 over 3 if this is 2 over 3 then i want to find the maximum radius of that uh, circle so i can write if this is 2 over 3 okay then om is the cosine 30 of that value so 2 over 3 multiplied by square root over 2 cosine 30 you will get 1 over om distance is 1 over square root 3 vdc and actually this is the calculations have there okay so you can have 2 over 3 vdc times square root 3 over 2 so you can get up to vdc over square root 3 and this is the peak if you want to get the rms you can divide that value by square root 2 then you will have 1 over square root 6 and VDC and that is if uh, you can uh, check it uh, let me do it if you just uh, do it uh, sorry if you just uh, divide 540 volts divided by uh, square root 6 you will have 220 point volts point 45 volts okay so it is really uh, close to 210 20 volts again uh, the 
calculation technique is different for short harmonic PWM. You can do it using Fourier series. Of course, fundamentals. I'm skipping that section. And for line to line voltage, again, VDC divided by square root 6 times square root 3. Then that means VDC over square root 2 or space vector 0 0.707 of the DC voltage. And for sinusoidal PWM, then it is, uh, you know, you can VDC over 2 divided by square to RMS. Then you multiply it by square 3 to get the line to line RMS. And it is 0 0.6. Okay, again, space vector PWM is 15% higher than the sinusoidal PWM as with the uh, third harmonic injection. Again, you know, that is a technique that we can use. Uh, understanding it analytically is not uh, that easy. And, you know, there are many calculations that you can uh, do it, but I just want you to understand the main idea and hopefully in your uh, simulation assignments, you will have you will have a chance to see how these two algorithms are working. Okay, thank you.